Coming up, we put some live conductors into a bucket. Check out all these part numbers. Oof. And we show you a hack with the Wago 2773 connectors. Today we're looking at this, the Wago gel box, and specifically how you use it with the 2773 range of connectors that we haven't seen on the channel before. Okay, looking at your table, you've gone connector crazy and it looks fantastic. Should we bring the camera in and look at the gel box? Yeah, let's have a look at the, the gel box first. It is really quite a simple concept. Uh, you've obviously got our Wago connector. So this is the 2773 connector here. You basically just place it inside with your conductors and you snap it shut right, to okay. make the, joint, the gel joint. Now, uh, we have seen other gel devices before, so this is not a silicon-based gel. Okay, so that's yep. quite important. So uh, that does improve the stability of the connector over a long period of time. So it's not silicon-based. The gel molds itself around the connectors very easily. But it's not as sticky as some of those other sort of silicon gels we've seen. So let's have, just have a look at actually the gel, Gary, because yep, it's quite okay. interesting. So I can actually oh, yeah. pull the gel out. Yeah, so that, you know, it's a solid, solid ish you know it's moving around but it, i can actually get that back into the box and none of it's left on your fingers yeah and there you go fingers are still clean so when we think about using these in applications can you give us some examples where we'll be using the gel box uh yeah so i mean uh low voltage or safety extra low voltage lighting systems are ideal i've got an example here that we'll show you how to make up in a little while where i've connected this uh, led strip right um, which is 24 volts through the box now if you're going to use them say in a mains application so you might you know a lot of say bollard lights and things like that where you might get condensation you would have to be inside some other form of electrical enclosure and i see a lot of that on social media don't you you get an ip rated box they fill it full of connections then fill it full of a poured in gel yeah and obviously that gel sometimes is two parts yeah. takes time to cure and is yeah it's uh, quite uh, can be quite expensive actually mm. when you do it as well but it's simple isn't it make your connections close it down it's, it's it's really super quick and stay tuned to the end of this video because we'll show you actually yeah how quick that is and yeah we'll by dropping all... it in a bucket full of water when it's live okay that's how we, yeah, that's yeah. How we like to do it so I, th I think we, we need to look at it being used should we, should we use it with solid conductors first yeah let's have a look at solid conductors so you've got strip back your conductors first then, what length are you going for? Yeah, so these are 13 millimetres, a little bit longer than you'd have on the 221, which is 11 millimetres. So I've just set the depth stop there. Again, on these connectors, handy little, uh, it's a handy little guide on the connector itself. So okay, you can yeah. check that you've got the right length. Now here's something people may not know. You obviously push it in there. Now you see that clear window there, Gary? I the can top? see the clear window. Yeah, when it's pushed in properly, you should just be able to see the insulation and no copper in that tiny little oh. window there. That's a top tip that is, and obviously we see the copper at the other end. Yes, yeah, so that's nicely pushed into the right place. Right, okay, so you're gonna do all of the conductors, yeah? Yeah, so I've prepared them all up. In this case, I'm putting it in the gel box. So mm. just simply press them into place. Hinge the lid over, and I've just got to snap those connectors on the side. There we go, that's our IPX8 connection finished. So you can see from that, can you, where this will have to go into another enclosure. Obviously, we've got the outer insulation from the actual conductors exposed. Also, you, you can enter it by just opening it up. There's no key or tool in order to enter the actual gel box itself, is it? Yeah, that's it. And just, just as we're passing on there, obviously, solid conductors in the uh, 2773 series, obviously, they're easy to put in. You can actually remove a solid conductor by twisting them and pulling them out. Okay, is there a recommended number of times that you can do that? Uh, so Vargo say you can do that up to 20 times with a solid conductor conductor and obviously if you, you know you look on there it's actually yeah it's amazing you can actually see where the connector's bitten into that and right. I know uh, yeah a lot of our uh, viewers in America still struggle with the concept of these when compared to the wire nuts Gary they certainly do okay they'll catch up eventually well if you want to catch up I think we ought to look at the part numbering system you've got laid out <laughs> okay. down for us and I recommend anyone who wants a, a good copy of it you can screenshot the next bit here we go yeah. let's have a look so okay. where do you want to start? So here's our gel boxes. So they come in three sizes. So 207, 1331, all the way to 207, 1333. That's obviously the bigger box. 
that's the smaller box. Uh, there is another range of boxes to accommodate the 2216 series. So okay. that's obviously for that's up slightly to, larger one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah for up to uh, six millimeter conductors. And that's how I'm beginning to decipher the Wago part numbers, Gary, because along here, what I've done is, is sort of show some examples of the 221 series that you can fit in that box. We've got a fantastic video on that. If you haven't seen it, that explains uh, all of that. So I won't dwell on that for too long. Um, and then down here, we've got the uh, 2773 series, uh, which all of these take a four millimeter conductor. And you can see by the ah, yeah. so fours down yeah. there. So if there was a six there, it'd be up to six mil, okay. Yep. Uh, and then obviously the number here is obviously the number of conductors it can take down the end. So what I've done here is there's obviously the smaller box can take two of these two conductor versions, Right. one of the three where if we go up to possibly that the larger box can take four of the two conductor versions or this is this is our um, yeah this is our working out this is not the official uh, Wago data sheet on it now obviously you could mix and match this you could obviously have combinations of two and three or two and four or depending on obviously what type of system I'm just uh, admiring your work now so people want to screenshot that they'll probably want to grab it at that point there well you know I love a part number you do love a part number yeah so we've seen it with solid conductors. Yep. Obviously we can use fine stranded conductors. And you think there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a hack or a cheat here? Uh, well, yeah, so no, you can use stranded conductors, so class two, sort of like your typical conduit cable. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. Fine stranded conductors you know, on the data sheet. It doesn't officially say you can use them with the uh, 2773 series. Of course you can with the 221s, that'll take anything. It will do, yeah. But there is a little hack, Gary, to uh, be able to use these with uh, stranded conductors class five. Let's have a look at that. So you know, we love a ferrule on the channel. How is this going to be a hack then, Gordon? Okay, so now you wouldn't think you could use um, stranded class five conductors with these two 773 series connectors, but in fact you can if you put a ferrule onto them, Gary. Okay, and again, those ferrules are at the right length. That was a bit of luck as well, so you didn't have to trim them back. Yeah, well, that have to be the length, obviously, you'd have on a solid conductor, which is 13 millimeters. So I'm using this with this uh, uh, IP rated LED strip for outdoor use. So again, a lot of these come with prepared ends and you need to somehow join two wires together. So I think obviously using these, uh, these uh, the Wago connectors in the gel enclosure is an ideal solution for that. So again, push them through. Now, obviously the, the connectors go up to four millimeter square conductors. You will not get that if you're using a ferrule because obviously the ferrule and the plastic end take up some room at the end. Okay, yeah, so you wouldn't get four mil in because yeah. of the extra metal crack okay, on the ferrule. Prepare them, put them into the, con into the connectors, push them into place, click the lid shut, and that's our uh, outdoor LED system protected to IPX8. And what voltage would that be at? 12, 24? 24 volt strip this, Gary. So yeah. SLV, we don't have to worry about another enclosure. We're going to tease it just a little bit longer before we put the gel box into water, which is just down there. But I want to see what's in your hand first, Gordon. Okay. Let's have a look at that. Well, let's just check out some of the details on the 2773 connector, because there's a lot of markings on there, and sometimes that confuses people a little bit, particularly uh, when it comes to current ratings. But before that, let's have a look. There's obviously approvals for all sorts of parts of the world, including uh, UL for the US to keep our American friends happy, ENEC, which is Europe, and a PSE, which is Japan. Now, they have a completely different current rating to the rest of the world. Obviously, that fits their electrical system. But when it comes to Europe, obviously, we're up to 450 volts, 32 amps, and all of the connectors in this range will take a four millimeter conductor into there. So, stranded or um, solid. Okay, and we said about the ferrule, it just probably have to be smaller, wouldn't you? Yes, for, for fine stranded. Wow, yeah. can, we, can, we, can we tease it out any longer, Gordon? Well, get, get a bucket of water up to bring out the buckets. So let's just hold it there. Do not try this at all. Well, it only seems fair that I hold the camera once again, Gordon, because this is going into a bucket of water, I think. Yeah, well, let's just see how good these uh, gel boxes are. So I've prepared some ends there, flexible cables here. We're back to the 221 series connector here. So again, exactly the same principle. Press them into place. Okay. And then we're going to liven this up, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, now do not do this at home because obviously this should be inside another enclosure, but we're going to liven this up. Uh, we're going to attach a LED high bay to it and we're just going to put it straight in the water. So I've made the end up there ready. You can see the gel ready to go. The we're light's going, lit. Yeah, we're live now. So Here's our, I'll just step back a little bit. Yeah, bucket, we'll tap one spring in it. Good luck. Here we go. Um, 
and we're in. Straight in. Yeah. So we'll just uh, yeah, slosh it about. So this is X8. Obviously, well, I haven't got a deep enough bucket to mimic X8 or enough pressure. So I'd probably suggest this is a 67 test. Okay. Um, just give it a good slosh around there. But yeah, the high bay light is still lit and we haven't tripped any breakers off, which mm. is great. Well, I'll knock the power off then before we open it up and have a look at the inside of it. Yeah. So let's just have a look here. So again, you don't need a tool to do it. So that's another reason you would put this inside another box for mains. Watch. Look, look at how that's squashed around those connectors straight away. Yeah. And yet, by magic, I can just peel it away. Okay, and then you're back in with the connectors. Yeah, bone dry as well. Yeah. Can I now reuse the gel box? Uh, so the advice from Wago is no, these are one time only use because some of that gel could migrate onto the conductors and may not uh, give a reliable connection the second time around. Much to everyone's great disappointment, yes, no harm was done to Gordon Routledge during the experiment, but of course it wouldn't, would it? Because these have been extensively tested to be submersed into water. The gel box is fantastic, isn't it, Gordon? It is, yeah, that's a great solution. I'm amazed how actually, well, yeah, it just straight away it goes around the connectors and, and forms that uh, IPX8 seal. So that is a good, obviously, yes, we've said. This isn't IPX8, it's a bucket, <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a good start. Obviously, I think if you've used these connectors, we'd obviously like to hear from you, wouldn't we, Gary? We would, and we always like those comments below. Is there any top tips when using Wago connectors that maybe we haven't said in this video and you'd like to add those into the comments? Is there somebody in the comments struggling and you know the answer? Could you answer that for us as well? We'd like that, wouldn't we? Less comments for us to answer as well. As always, please leave those below and he'll try and get back to as many as he can.